This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now we're going to deal with a chapter uh, which looks at the internet, e-business, and what's meant by big data and its uses. The first model is known as the six eyes of e-business, and it is tremendously useful. Uh, this type of question tends to come into kind of strategic planning uh, questions. Uh, the internet and IT are, <coughs> are very often drivers for changes in uh, strategy. You just have to see uh, the way Amazon in the past 20 years has kind of come from nowhere and giving, of course, great competition uh, to traditional bookshops or, or indeed almost any sort of shop nowadays. And the six eyes of e-business, uh, a nice, easy to understand, short way of listing out all the effects that e-trading or e-business uh, uh, has when, it, when a, uh, an organization embarks on it. And first of all, intelligence. It is fantastically easy to uh, collect intelligence about people who are, for example, browsing your site. You know, <coughs> excuse me. You know exactly uh, what pages they visited. Yeah, you can uh, find out exactly or know exactly what products they may have looked at, and so on. Uh, uh, you know how long they've spent there. You know whether they nearly bought something and then kind of retracted back again, and so on. You also get information uh, about geographically where they are, uh, what country, what town they're in. Uh, it's, it's very easy to get on the internet. What you can do, uh, particularly if they log on and they have an account, of course this can be recorded against their name. You know what they've bought, and if you know what they've bought, then you might be able to make intelligent suggestions of other products they might be interested in. Even if you don't uh, log on, uh, the site that you're looking at can send what are, are known as cookies. And uh, cookies, cookies are small bits of information which they send to your computer, and <coughs> which is st stored. And even though, <coughs> sorry, and even though the company doesn't know who you are, uh, when you next go back to their site, this cookie, uh, which they will locate, uh, tells them the sort of products you looked at at, at, at that time. So, fantastic for uh, uh, gathering intelligence about customers or potential customers, popularity of products and so on. Individualization. Individualization means that uh, every separate person who visits the site can be given a potentially a slightly different experience. So, if previously you had expressed an interest or bought certain products, when you go to that site, up on the uh, the home page, if you, if you like, they can maybe advertise uh, other products that you might potentially be interested in. Uh, uh, if you've ever booked uh, planes, trains and so on, uh, you can normally store your seating preferences. <coughs> so if you always like an aisle seat, it will kind of remember that uh, and you know, it will kind of offer that to you, probably charging you. Uh, because the, the purpose of e-business is to make money, uh, but if they offer you something in which you are actually particularly interested, uh, you are more likely to buy that, or um, no, certainly than something else. Uh, and and it's it's really suggesting that you buy it. This kind of upselling, uh, which they may be able to uh, uh, take part in. Interactivity. Well, uh, we know that we can load up our shopping basket, take stuff out of the shopping basket. We know we can uh, uh, scan different flights, look at prices, uh, we can choose our seats online, we can decide <coughs> what baggage we want and so on uh, uh, there. And we can also, uh, and very quite quite useful here, there's a whole business of reviews. You can read other people's reviews and you can leave feedback yourself. And the idea is that this kind of involves you in the product, involves you in the company, uh, and will build a kind of customer loyalty. <coughs> Integration means that uh, when you, let's say, decide to 
buy a product from Amazon and you put in your credit card and you press buy, really most of what's going to happen next is completely automated. Or if you are ordering a computer and you say, I want this size of disk, this size of memory, uh, I want this sort of processor, this size of monitor and so on, all of that effectively will be fed into a very automated, integrated system with hardly any human intervention at all, because you've given them already the input in a computer-readable form. Independence. Independence means <coughs> that it matters less and less where physically a, a business is sited. It used to be, if you wanted a lot of business, then you had to be, uh, in a way, having shops in the middle of busy city centres. Uh, now you don't. Uh, I mean, do you actually know if you order something from Amazon, physically where the warehouse is, where it's actually coming from? Do you actually care? It also gives uh, great power to small suppliers, the, the kind of focus differentiators operating in a small way to a niche market, because the internet gives them really a world stage. Uh, if they hadn't got the internet, they would be, you know, relying on kind of word of mouth and people passing the shop and, and, and that sort of thing. But now with uh, uh, the internet, uh, you can uh, look at sites anywhere in the world. Uh, and uh, what people should be doing on their sites is they put in metadata. So you might be called, your company might be called ABC Co. <clears throat> but of course that gives nothing away at all. It might be your name, but it gives nothing away at all about what the company does. So what you could do uh, is, let's say your company was in some sort of IT, uh, you could say, you know, computers. It might be computer repair. You might put in IT consultancy. A whole list, uh, really, of descriptors. This is not visible uh, on the web page, but when you uh, feed something into Google and you're searching, Google will look at the metadata uh, and it can find from all over the world, really, uh, uh, companies who may be supplying what you want. Of course, you can narrow that down to local companies but it allows these small specialist companies a much better, much bigger world stage. <coughs> the final point is industry. Industry means here that really the shape of the industry changes with IT. If you think of banking, uh, certainly all over the UK, bank branches are closing down because fewer and fewer people need to go to a bank branch uh, to do their financial transactions. More and more people are doing it on the internet. Think what it's done to the music business, uh, where the purchase and production of CDs has plummeted, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, most music is now distributed by uh, uh, Spotify or iTunes, uh, that process. Think what it's doing to films and television. Uh, now we have... Uh, the ability to download a film from Amazon or Apple or Netflix. Uh, we don't have to keep watching the mainstream television. We have to don't have to go to the cinema quite so often and so on. It's got this very profound change on the industry. Now, just to give you a little example of what's uh, uh, potentially uh, possible there, <coughs> I've got up here uh, my Amazon account. And we'll just kind of uh, look at uh, some of these uh, ideas, if you like, some of these six eyes. We already know that, uh, you know, we don't care really where the Amazon warehouse is. We already know that if you order something from Amazon, uh, it, it the, the item is more or less picked automatically from a shelf, put in a little conveyor belt and so on, uh, and more or less packed up automatically, nearly without human intervention there. But let's look at the uh, the kind of intelligence which is uh, coming in here. And I can look at my orders. I can look at it for the last six months. Uh, so uh, let me just see if we can move this across a, a little bit. 
maybe we can't uh, maybe you want to go a little bit smaller like that perhaps maybe this will allow us to to see it a little better make sure it's on the screen uh, and this shows that you know we uh, we didn't we, we rented a video it was downloaded over the internet uh, so it's altering the the um, industry structure really we didn't go to the cinema uh, uh, for that one uh, uh, this here was uh, something that was bought it was something for um, a present for for my son something to do with rock climbing i didn't have to see where it came from it it appears it actually has come from germany to the uk because that's that's where these these devices are manufactured i bought a tripod for a camera i bought various books and so on going through there and let's see uh, well that's for the last six months but uh, the real uh, intriguing thing is if you go in here it goes all the way back uh, presumably to where uh, i started on amazon 2000 could well be before many of you were born in fact we can go to 2012 we can see what was bought in there we can go to 2000 and you know any of these years and go all the way back uh, and see what was being uh, bought so we'll go back to the last uh, six months in here again so let's see uh, what happens if i go to this book that i uh, bought so uh, here we begin to see, uh, you know, we can read customer reviews. I didn't have to buy it to see the reviews. I can actually browse these reviews before I buy it here. And then if you go down here, it's uh, looked at my buying history uh, and has come up with some suggestions. So there's a kind of individualization here. These are uh, suggestions which are kind of unique to me. Uh, based on the sort of, or allegedly based anyway, in the sort of books I was buying here. I must say there's quite a lot of these books I would never think of buying, but but anyway, that doesn't doesn't really uh, uh, matter. I, down here, I think I can write a customer review if I want to. I'm getting uh, some involvement with this, some interactivity with it, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, and it, it's a, a fantastically, I think it's a fantastically, uh, involving site it works really really well for amazon and demonstrates an awful lot of the uh, you know the six eyes of uh, e-business e right e-business patterns is very uh, quickly i don't think these are too important not nearly as important as the six eyes it just <coughs> demonstrates uh, the the vast kind of really quite big variety of, of patterns which are available uh, on e-business. So there's e-shopping, like going to Amazon. There's e-auctions, uh, and of course there the one is eBay. Where you can put uh, products up and people bid for it, and then the, the time is out and whoever has the highest bid is the uh, uh, the biggest one, the, is going to be the winner there. Uh, we have, I've gone back to this one here, but disintermediation is taking the middleman out so now I can go directly, say, to BA's, British Airways website, and I can book directly with them. I don't have to go through travel agents or anything of that sort. Reintermediation is where we can go to uh, a travel site, uh, maybe like Expedia uh, or, or, or something of that uh, sort, and we can look at flights and maybe up come six different airlines with flights to the to and from the places you want to go with different prices and so on. Uh, so we have uh, really putting back a kind of automated travel agent in there, and that's re-intermediation. Counter-mediation is where several retailers themselves set up uh, a middleman, an agent. So if you take, uh, I think it's the uh, travel site Apodo, uh, that is owned by several airlines and if you go there uh, you will see their flights in preference uh, but you're given this uh, bit of a choice anyway between the airlines who are part of the Apodo um, organization you can advertise other people's goods and services 
and you will get uh, fees for that, relatively small fees. It's on a kind of usually done on a per click basis, is what you're going to be getting on the income. Obviously, you advertise your own goods and services. Uh, that's in a way what what most internet sites start off doing. And as I say, with this metadata, it enables you to be discovered uh, very easily by search engines such as Google. E procurement. <coughs> e procurement is buying on the internet, and and it could be something simple like how do I find six suppliers of this product? Uh, and you again you can put into a search engine and look for suppliers of the product. You can then go and look at their websites and decide which ones you might be approaching for a particular order. Another example of e procurement is what you would call a reverse auction. Now, a normal auction like eBay, the prices go up. <coughs> so you're buying something, somebody else wants it, and you bid against each other, and the price rises. What happens in a reverse auction is that the price comes down. So basically what you say, you are the buyer. You say, I want, let's say, 100 tons of some product, some raw material. And this goes into this uh, e-procurement reverse auction site. And supplier one uh, says, right, I see you want 100 tons of X here. I will supply that for, uh, you know, let's say, 1,200. And uh, supplier two sees that. Uh, and supplier two says, right, I uh, can beat that. I will put in a, a bid, if you like, for 1,000. And then supplier one or three, whatever it's going to be, let's just keep it one and two here. Supplier one might come back with a, a kind of reply to that, say, well, I'll do it for 900. And then maybe once it goes again, it maybe goes to, to 850. And at some point, the time runs out, the guillotine comes down, and whoever has the lowest price there is going to win the contract, which in this case would be two. Customer relationship management. Customer relationship management is trying to build uh, an ongoing kind of permanent relationship with a customer. What we don't particularly want is a kind of temporary relationship with a customer where maybe they buy once and we never see them again. So the emphasis is on building a relationship. And the... Uh, uh, Steps, if you like, or the parts of customer relationship management is first of all acquiring new customers. And that could be just a, a kind of internet uh, search. And then you need a good internet site uh, which looks attractive to them uh, so they're kind of sucked into it and they might place their first order. Uh, and, and recognizing perhaps that this is the first order from this customer Maybe what the software does is give them a bit of a, you know, an introductory offer, no delivery costs or something like that. Uh, because very often the, the hardest bit of getting the new customer is the very first order that they trust you with that and they maybe a, a, a kind of abandon their existing suppliers. Then what we want to do is to retain them. So all sorts of methods of retaining them, but for example, saying we've received your order, then the next day saying we've dispatched your order, then allowing them to track the order, uh, uh, gives them a, a feeling of being kind of personally looked after. And, you know, we I think we enjoy being able to see the progress of an order and, and so on. You could give points. So you could give a kind of award points to people so that they keep coming back uh, to you to, to earn these points and so on. Uh, you give them a very good customized, individualized experience on your website, uh, giving them recommendations and, and, and so on, letting them look back for 20 years as to what was bought before, uh, so they'll easily be able to find products that they liked previously and want to order again. And finally, what we're trying to do is to what's called extend customers, uh, get them to buy more really or, or buy more expensively and you see this you see this all the time you may not be aware of it 
Uh, but for example, if you take a, an airline site, so you book your seat. Okay, so that's the the basic purchase. And then <coughs> many airlines now uh, say, well, uh, do you want to have checked in luggage? Uh, if you want checked luggage, then you pay a little bit more uh, for that. So that's kind of extending it there. Uh, and then it says, would you like to, to choose your seat? And maybe they give you a range of seats, uh, the normal ones up to ones with more leg room and so on. Uh, maybe they offer you uh, kind of priority boarding. Uh, maybe they're also going to offer you car hire. And this is all a uh, methodology, if you like, being run by the software, uh, which is going to induce you, they hope, to spend a bit more money. Where I used to work, I used to work at a software company and we had some customer relationship management software and it's just worth maybe describing the sort of things it did. Uh, there's nothing too, you know, too earth-shatteringly clever in this, uh, but it, it was a very good, it's kind of simple little system. First of all, what it would do, uh, it would recognize uh, the caller, so it was caller ID. So up on the, the, the phones would come the name of the company calling or maybe sometimes the name of the person calling. So you, 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 when you're answering the phone, you kind of know who it is. Uh, you're kind of alerted, if you like, uh, and can maybe do a better job uh, there. And then when you uh, we answered the phone, the second thing that, that would, would happen is it would, a big screen would open up on our computer. And it would have the, the caller ID up, up there. <coughs> and very often it would say the type of business it was. Because you can't always tell from the, <coughs> the name of the business what it does. And you might have forgotten what it does and so on. And then it would have a really a, a list of kind of uh, people. So Mr. X, the CEO, uh, Ms. Y here might be the finance director, uh, and then you'd have, you know, the, uh, let's say Mr. Z might be the sales director and so on. So, so you're alerted as to who you might be speaking to. So if the person says, hello, this is, uh, you know, Ms. Y, you, then you know this is quite an important person in the organization. This is a finance director. Uh, and, and from that, you also know maybe, uh, what authority they have to order new goods. And then uh, what we would have is products bought, so history of products. So it might say something, you know, in 2013, they bought, a, we were selling packages, it might say, you know, package A, and it would say, can you kind of what they may be paid for that? Let's say three thousand five hundred and so on. And then uh, maybe in you know two thousand fifteen, they bought package B or something, maybe two thousand. So we know what products they're using of ours. So this enables people to say, oh, I see you bought in two thousand and fifteen, a couple of years ago, package B. How are you getting on with it? How are you liking it? And uh, and if you see they have package A and it's four, five, six years old, then what you might be able to say is, well, we have a new release of that package. Uh, it's much more stable, it's many more features and so on. Um, uh, you should really consider maybe think about upgrading to the new package uh, because it, it's, it's a really worthwhile transition. So it allows this idea uh, really of extending customers. And then, and this may appear to be slightly creepy, uh, we had for each of these people, let's call it Mr. X here, uh, but we'd have it for all of them really, we would keep some of their interests. So if Mr. X uh, was a fan of a particular football team, we would record that. 
And this enables you then to, if you like, get into the kind of soft skills of, of chatting informally, you know, about their interests, the fortunes of the football team. Uh, you know, if they're, if they're a keen cyclist, you could say, well, you know, we're out at the weekend cycling and so on. So, so you get this, this, um, it's easier to be friendly, or shall we say, easier to appear to be friendly. And you get this nice soft chat before maybe you broach the subject, you know, would you like to upgrade product A? And then what we had uh, were, were basically notes. So you'd always, after the phone call, you would write out in brief note form what the phone call was about, what you discussed and so on. Uh, because, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> because if they ring up again, uh, you can say, ah, oh, we discussed that last week, you know, what's happening, how are you getting on, and, and so on. And it gives the, the, the idea, especially if somebody else answers the phone, they can look back through the notes, that the caller is dealing with a kind of joined up company. Uh, if they're making some complaint or, 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 or asking advice about software, they don't have to kind of go back and tell the whole story again. Uh, the, the problem or their original phone call was kind of noted here. And you can say, oh, I see from the notes, we discussed that last week and we suggested you do that, kind of did it work. And, and it gives a, a fantastic feeling of satisfaction, I think, on both sides of the conversation. And finally, we had a kind of a alarm or memo system. So if I say, right, I'll get back to you on Friday, how do you make sure you get back to them on Friday? And so you could set a, a kind of alarm that would pop up on, on the screen. You know, remember to uh, to ring Ms. Y here about so-and-so. And actually it would come up on everyone's screen because there's a, a chance, you know, I'm not in on Friday, I'm ill or something of that sort. And here there's a client wondering, oh, he hasn't phoned up. Uh, but then, you know, somebody else phones up on my behalf and says, sorry, he's ill, or can I help you, and so on. And and it just just gives this... Uh, feeling, it's not necessarily a false feeling, but it actually helps people to build and maintain a relationship with their customers. Of course, very important uh, now in uh, dealing with your customers are social uh, media, uh, you know, things like Facebook, uh, Twitter, and maybe YouTube. Or as I call them together, you twit face. Uh, but uh, it, it allows, you know, little messages to be kind of sent to customers very regularly. It allows them to maybe send messages back to you for, I don't know why, but some people uh, on Twitter follow supermarkets. Uh, it, it seems to me I might have better things to do than that. But it gives the supermarket the chance to kind of almost drip feed, uh, to keep reminding people we're here, we're here. Uh, here's a new announcement and so on. Barriers to e-business. Not every company is going to embrace it for various reasons. First of all, <laughs> most or well, many companies will be frightened of the setup costs. Although for simple e-business, a simple web page is not going to be too outrageous. It gets more complicated, more difficult if you're going to be buying and selling on the web, not so much the software, but making sure that if something orders something on the web, that you actually get around to, to dispatching it, because, because people kind of do expect that. The type of business, some businesses are not going to be maybe very uh, suitable to if you're maybe running a hairdresser's. But all you can really do, so far as the business is concerned, is allow people to make appointments. Which is fine, which is good enough, uh, but uh, but it's not kind of earth shattering. Some people get frightened of the running costs. If they have no in-house expertise, every time they want the web page changed, they have to employ a kind of subcontractor, and they think that's going to be quite expensive. They worry about the time to set up the system. Not a great worry, I think. I mean, if you're going to set it up, put the time in. Maintaining it then tends to be you know, a little bit of work every day, every week, something of that sort, perhaps not too bad. No in-house skills, so you feel that you're always having to hire in consultants at quite high charge-out rates. 
Maybe they won't do what you want. Maybe sometimes you're worried that they will uh, steal some of your data and learn some, some tricks from you. Suppliers and customers not interested. So let's think uh, customers not interested. Uh, so it could be that maybe the, the customers you know, are just not very technically minded. They don't use computers very much. It could be the, the customers are uh, older. Now, of course, many older people are perfectly fine on IT. Uh, but, but many older customers are not particularly used to, to IT. And they would much prefer a kind of human contact uh, rather than some internet interface. Then there are security worries. People worry about hacking. People worry that if I take people's credit card numbers into my system, uh, then, uh, you know, if something goes wrong and these credit card numbers escape and then people begin to lose money from it, then my reputation is going to be destroyed. And, if, and that's a real worry. It's a, it's a genuine worry. And some very large companies have, of course, had, had huge data leaks uh, and have had to, you, you know, really apologize very profusely uh, and, and kind of promise it's not going to happen again and also to refund and re recompense any of their customers who are harmed by that leak. Uh, 